Welcome to Accounting in Focus. Let's talk about LIFO and how we calculate LIFO under periodic and under perpetual inventory. So first LIFO. Okay, LIFO. Let's see, let's get my brush here. Okay, LIFO stands for what? LIFO's last in first out. Okay, so what does that mean? So that means that that means that the last units purchased are going to be the first ones we're going to use when we're costing our inventory. The way I like to think about LIFO is think about if you live in a cold weather climate, okay, we have sand piles that they use for um, salting and sanding, okay, the roads when it gets icy. So think about how these sand piles come about, right? So, you know, on the first day, you know, let's imagine that this is sand, okay, so on 1-3, we're going to purchase some sand and it's going to go on the bottom of the pile, right? Then on 1-9, we're going to purchase some more sand and we're going to put that on top of that, right? Okay, so then when you have your sale, okay, so say the sale on 112, we're not going to go and we're, going to, we're not going to pull the sand from down here, right? We're not going to dig around in the pile to try to get the old sand. What are we going to do? We're going to grab the sand from the top of the pile, right? So we're going to grab the last sand that came in. Okay, so that's kind of how LIFO works, right? Is that, you know, if you imagine a bunch of layers, you're going to take from the top layer first. Okay, so that's kind of how, you know, that's how I like to think of LIFO is, you know, think of a sand pile, you know, where you keep putting more stuff on top and whenever you have a sale, you're going to grab the stuff from the top of that pile, not down from the bottom. Okay, so let's take a look under periodic. Okay, remember that under periodic inventory, we're doing these calculations at the end. Okay, so at the end of the month, we're going to do all these calculations. So we can count everything that we have at the end of the month. Okay, so under periodic, first thing I like to do whenever I'm doing one of these problems is I like to calculate my goods available for sale. Okay, just so I know the total value so I can tie back to it. So let's add all this up. Okay, so that's 200 plus 300 is 5, plus 3 is 8, plus another 2, so that's $1,000. Okay, so that's 1,000. And then I also like to calculate how many units I have. Um, so that way I can make sure that my numbers tie back to that also. Okay, so that's 200, 350, 450, 500 units. Okay, 500 units. Okay, <clears throat> and then let's also calculate how many I sold. So I've got 150, 225, 325. Okay. So I had 500 units available for sale. I sold 325. So I know that my ending inventory, what I have left, my ending inventory is going to be 500 minus 325 or 175 units. Okay, so I always have to make sure that I've got 175 units left over my ending inventory and I calculate my cost of goods sold for 325. Okay, so let's start, go start going through periodic. So remember, with periodic, we're only calculating at the end. Okay, so what you could do if you wanted to is you could say, okay, we sold 325, so we need 325 units total, so you can, you know, count backwards. But let's do this by sale. So on 1-4, I sold 150 units. Okay, so we're going to take those from the last units that came in. Okay, so I'm going to take, under this method, I'm going to take 50 units, at four dollars so that's 200 then I'm gonna take so now those units are gone right I don't have those anymore Oop, those are gone <clears throat> okay so now now I've got 
I still need 100 units left for that sale. Okay, so I'm going to take the 100 units from the next group. So 100 units times $3. And that's $300. Okay, so now that sale's done, right? And those units are gone. Boop, those are gone too. Okay, so now on 1-9. One 1-9 nine, one nine I sold, or I'm sorry, one twelve. Wrong date. One twelve. Here, let's undo that. Okay, one twelve. I sold 75 units. Okay, so remember, these are gone, right? Those are all used up. Those are all used up. So now I'm going to go here. Okay, so I need 75 units at two dollars each equals 150 okay so now half of those are gone so now I'll say 75 left okay <clears throat> so now 129 I sold 100 units so I've got 75 left here so I'm going to take 75 at two dollars and cross those out, that's now zero. And so that's 150. And then I, I need 25 more units to complete the sale. So 25 at, okay, this is all I have left for units, so at $1, and that equals 25. Okay, so I have 175 units left. Right, and that agrees to what I said here. I said my ending inventory was 175, so that agrees. So now I can go through and say, okay, so 200, 500, 800, 825. Okay, so $825 is my cost of goods sold. And now let's do ending inventory. I've got, in my ending inventory, I have 175 units at one dollar each so that's hundred seventy five dollars okay and what I always like to do is I always like to add these two numbers together that's my ending inventory add these two numbers together to make sure they tie back to the thousand right so if I take 175 plus 825 175 plus 825 that gives me 1,000, right? So that ties back to my goods available for sale. Okay, so goods available for sale. Okay, so my ending inventory plus my cost of goods sold ties back to the 1,000. Excellent, okay, because that's exactly what we wanted to do. So now, okay, so now we've cleared off our numbers here, so now we can do perpetual. Okay, so under perpetual inventory, what we're doing is we are looking at each individual date and saying, okay, imagine that you've got to do a journal entry on 1-4. Under perpetual inventory, you have to include not only the sale, but the effect of inventory and cost of goods sold for that transaction. So dates are really important when you're doing perpetual under LIFO and under weighted average. So we're going to have to look at each individual date and say what did we have on hand on that date and only take from there. Okay, so let's start 1-4. Okay, what did I have on 1-4? One four? On 1-4, one four, okay, I had the purchase from 1-3 and the beginning inventory. So under LIFO, I'm looking at what I had what I had last, right, what came in last, and that's going to be the first to go out. So if I need 150 units, okay, I'm going to take the last ones that we had that came in before 1-4, so that would be the units from 1-3. So I'm going to take my 150 units from there, $2 each. Okay, so now these units are gone. That's zero. Okay, so because the sale was on 1-4, I've got to look to see what do I have on 1-4. The only thing I have is the beginning inventory and the 1-3 purchase. LIFO, I'm going to take the last units that came in by that date. So that's why I'm taking the 150 at 2. So that's 300. 
Okay, so now that transaction's done. So now let's do 112. For 112, okay, I need 75 units. So where am I going to take them from? Well, on 112, I had this purchase now, right? This purchase had come in a couple days before. So if I'm doing LIFO and I've got to take the last units that I had on hand on that date, they're going to come from 1-9. Okay, so I need 75 units at $3 each. That's $225. So I'm going to say, okay, I took 75 from here. So that gives me, let's see, 25 left. Okay. So now I'm going to do 129. And on 129, we sold 100 units. So where's that going to come from? Well, I only have 50 here. So actually, let me undo that. All right, I sold 100 units. I have 50 from the 18th. So 50 at $4. So that's 200. Okay. Then I'm going to take... Those are gone. I've got 25 left from 1.9. So, 25 at $3 is 75. And then I've got to go back. Okay, so there's no more left from 1.3. We took all those. So I'm going to go back to my beginning inventory. I'm going to take the last 25 at $1 is $25. That's 8 25 total. I've got 175 left, which is what we said our ending inventory would need to be. Okay, so in this example, my numbers are the same under both periodic and perpetual, but notice if you look at each individual sale, the cost of each individual sale is different than it was here, right? On 1-4 it was 300 and in this case on 1-4 the total of these two is actually 500. Okay, so we see a little bit different numbers for each one of the sales. Okay, but the total overall cost of goods sold is the same. You're not always going to see that, so you've got to make sure that you go through the steps. Okay, you know, for each individual transaction and pick out um, exactly which units you're going to be taking. My ending inventory in this case is 175 units at $1 each, which is equal to $175. If I add these two together, I still get back to the thousand. Okay. Always make sure that you do both pieces of the calculation just to make sure that you don't miss anything. Because if <clears throat> you might have an error with your calculator, you might have an error with addition, you know, if you're doing it manually. So I always I always like to go through and make sure that I tie back, okay, to my goods available for sale, which is still a thousand dollars.